Hi, it's Salman Coglano. Welcome to What's Going On With Shipping. So I had an opportunity to interview an amazing young woman today, Madeline Walchuko, who is the second mate on board an American container ship that is currently in a shipyard in China, Shanghai, in the midst of a COVID lockdown. The ship has been there for over 60 days, and she captures the events in a YouTube series she's doing entitled Restricted to Ship. The first episode dropped last week. The second episode just dropped. And I'll have links to the series throughout the video. Please take your time. Go on over to her YouTube channel. Watch this video. It is an amazing video to watch. She really captures what it's like to be stuck on board a ship during lockdown in China. Uh, I did an interview with her, about a 30-minute interview. It was great. We talked about a myriad of things from why she became a mariner to how she found herself on this lockdown. What is the crew doing? How are they surviving? And really for a bonus treat at the very end of the video here, I have her and her performance of a song she wrote called Creep. Uh, she performed it down in one of the ship's cargo holds, and it is just a beautiful song. So if you can... Please watch the video, catch it all the way at the end, but most importantly, go to go over to Madeline's YouTube page. You'll see the link right here. Go ahead, ho head over there, and check out her series, Restricted to Ship. Now, the interview with Madeline. So, Madeline, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us for today. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great. Listen, I, I watched episode one, and I was really taken away by it. I, I, you managed to capture the plight of what it's like to be stuck on a ship without a lot to do. And, and I sailed back in the 90s, and, and I, I feel like you're stuck back in the 90s uh, with the technology and, and where you're all at. So, uh, if you could... What brought this about? I mean, number one, what made you want to film this? And second of all, why are you in this situation that you're kind of in right? All right, so um, I'll start, I guess, with the situation itself. Um, we have been in shipyards since February 21st. Um, that's when we first got here. Um, and we had, you know, done the whole China quarantine procedure where we go out to anchor uh, for 12 days and then we came back in um, and we did a week-long quarantine at the dock before they even started work. Um, they did about three weeks of work with a, a little less than 500 people on board working um, and then the lockdown happened uh, midday on the 23rd of March. So these people didn't even know that they were going to be locked down. There was no uh, and there were rumors that there was going to be a lockdown, but nobody had any real idea uh, the extent or how long it was going to be. We still don't know. Um, it's been 34 days so far. Um, so, you know, they, they had to leave midday, middle of the day at lunchtime. They went to lunch and they never came back. We were told they were at a safety meeting um, and then they just haven't been back since then. Um, so that's been really tough to deal with. We, we haven't gotten any information at all from anyone. The company doesn't know. There's, there's no information from the government to us or the company um, or our unions. And uh, so we, uh, we check the news. That's basically how we get our information. And of course, with news outlets, they, they play up a lot of stuff to be pretty terrifying sounding. So that's, where we get all of our news is just the most negative uh, aspect of it, which, I mean, based on what we've seen, it's good that those news stories are getting out um, at all. 
Um, and then going to how the video came about, we had been kind of joking in general on this ship about making like a documentary for ourselves because there's just the way that sailors are in general, especially when they get to know each other and get friendly with each other. It's just like, there's just a lot of silliness. And um, so that kind of was a joke for, it's been a joke now for months. Um, and it became kind of less so when the situation started getting a little dire for us. Uh, we just, I mean, um, because the, the, it had already been kind of talked about, it was kind of like, well, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we documenting this? Because this could be kind of important. Um, and, you know, the fact that we had no information at all, uh, it was kind of like, well, this could last for months. Like, we have no idea how long this is going to last. So we need to start documenting this now. <laughs> like, it was the beginning of April when we started filming. So um, it was about a week into the pandemic or to the lockdown. So, I mean, it, you're not in a position where the ship can leave either. I mean, I mean, so you obviously you're in the midst of, of uh, a major repair availability. Uh, lots of times these are done in U.S. shipyards, but in many cases, American firms find that they have to go overseas either because they can't find availabilities in the U.S. And so they got to go to where there's dry docks and shipyards available and 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 the ship you're on operates across the Pacific, operates in that area. So it makes sense for you to go ahead and use that to you. So I want to show this clip real quick. And this is uh, one of the first clips you show. And, th and that is you guys going down the to get food, which I thought was a really interesting one. So I'm going to play this clip real quick and then we'll come back to it. Hey, Cap. Right behind you. Captain, she's taking, me. Yeah, they lure us down and then they just take us. <laughs> Security guards running away, so hopefully it's not explosives. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're going down the gangway right now. Wow, look what we got here. What is it? Bunch of peppers, bunch of daikon. Cabbage, potatoes. Those are huge. Are those zucchini? Are these giant zucchini? I'll start getting them up to the top. Wow. Jalapeno poppers for dinner. What are these? He's good up with yeah. Be dead. Yeah, a lot more now. So, man, this is a great little clip because I, I, I got taken by it right from the very beginning. The excitement. I've never seen quite so much excitement about zucchini before in my life. Uh, why, why was it that that is so uh, important for you? Um, actually, those are called opo. I looked them up since then, and uh, they're a type of squash here. Um, actually, now that we've had them... <laughs> in our meals, not the best uh, taste <laughs> or texture. It's, I've described it as kind of a, a veiny texture. Uh, no matter how you cook it, it's pretty difficult to get down. But um, yeah, I mean, we 
uh, we were supposed to get our huge, you know, routine food order right before the lockdown. Our shipment was waiting at the gate when the lockdown happened. So we didn't get our general, you know, month and a half long order um, at all. Uh, we that was all dispersed uh, amongst whoever got to it first, probably at the gate, um, and we never got it. So since then, it's just been government rations. Um, we, we get exactly what the rest of the city gets, uh, whatever they can give us. So it's been a lot of vegetable. I think now we've had four or five deliveries of vegetables. We got one delivery of, of fruit. It's been pretty small deliveries and about once a week. Um, and we have 29 people on board. We had to move on five of our company supervisors. Um, actually, before the lockdown happened, they decided to move on because they had a feeling uh, it was going to be something along these lines. They've been through lockdowns before here. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have multiple people on board that we don't usually have. Um, and we're, we're running low. And thank God we have a, a water connection hose on board for potable water. It's not the best water. Um, we, we do have to boil it and or filter it to drink it. But at least, you know, someone, someone from the shipyard can turn that valve on the dock whenever we need water. So that's a big plus. And on board the ship itself, uh, are you on your own power? Are you on shore power? Have you been able to run everything else on the ship? Or are you really kind of uh, hamstrung in, in what you're able to operate? Everything from, from you know, the heads and, and, and lavatories on board the ship. We have one working generator right now. Um, and we do, we're not able to open any uh, skin valves at all to the um, sea, sea side, even though we're in a river. Um, but because of just, there's so many things that they didn't finish down there. And if we open any skin valves, we're going to be flooded. So we have hoses connected from shore side for cooling. Um, we have gone back and forth between the generator and shore power. Their shore power can only withstand about a third of our usual load. Um, and that's not because <laughs> it's because their cables apparently can't take it. Their cables are so bad that if we go above a, a certain load, they will just catch on fire. Um, so when we are on shore power, um, we just have to be careful. We don't have any deck lights on at night. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty minimal. Um, we do have ventilation now. Uh, since the last week, we've been able to run ventilation, which has been amazing. <laughs> uh, we don't have AC, but we do have ventilation. <laughs> Uh, and we just kind of like open our windows to get a little bit of coldness in in the morning. Hello, my name is John Clark. I'm an AB and I'm here from Seattle. All right, so I'm out here. Um, I joined the ship in January. Situation for uh, being in shipyard has been tough. I've been sailing for about 17 years. I've been through a couple shipyards in the US and uh, one over in the Philippines. And by far, during COVID, this has been probably the toughest. Um, but as a sailor, you end up just rolling with the punches. You're gonna be stuck with good situations, bad situations. Uh, this one has probably been the toughest for me in the 17 years that I've been sailing. Um, but you have to get through it. We're stuck here, there's nothing we can do. No amount of bitching or complaining is gonna help, even though I do it. A lot of other people do it. A majority of the people do it. But after a while, you just have to give up and just roll with the punches. Um, it has been a tough time, but there's also fun times in between the little stuff. We got a decent crew, a couple crazy guys, a couple good guys. But when you're on a ship, you're family. You've got crazy uncles. You've got the the the, the jerks, the the buttheads. But you do what you do. You try to make deal with it. We get paid a decent amount, so that's like the only thing you get to look forward to. You work for a couple months in a row and you can take long vacations. So now we're stuck a couple weeks, almost a couple months into shipyard where it's empty, there's nothing going on, but you do what you can. Uh, luckily, most of the time the crew is keeping 
keeping everyone happy. Uh, there's definitely situations that's tough to deal with, but you just do what you do. And, and so, I mean, 29 of you on board now, and some of you obviously have been on board a lot longer. I mean, some crew members were talking about being on there for seven months now. And because the relief's not being done, you can't do reliefs in place in Shanghai, obviously. So, I, I, I mean, talk a little bit about that interaction. I mean, I mean, 29 people, you get to know everything about it. There's no new stories that you can tell everybody after a while. So, I, I mean, what are you guys doing to, uh, I mean, just even pass the time? I mean, obviously, obviously you're trying to get some work done, but still. We, um, we, we do karaoke, of course. Um, we have a lot of Filipinos on board, so that's just a staple. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, all U.S. citizens. But uh, it's the one thing I love about that is just like we just don't care anymore like you know how people at karaoke night they're like oh I don't know you know I have to have a few drinks before I have to like sing a song we are not like that we are you know we have some horrible singers on board and wow they just go to town uh, so that's that's one way you know we can pass the time which is it's it's very you know hilarious and uh, it's a good way to pass the time we are the champions, my friend. to the point where like if someone's having a bad day and they need some space you you know you know it you know you don't have to be like what's wrong what's wrong it's like obviously what's wrong is that we're stuck in the middle of a lockdown in China <laughs> like there's that's the explanation and there are so many people who haven't seen their families in 200 days like uh, you know, we're almost all of us are come May, all of us will be past our contracts, no exception. Uh, so uh, it's, it's just going to keep getting more difficult as time goes on. And, and, you know, one of the other crew members mentioned this, and I think it's really apropos is, is, is he talked about the fact that this really doesn't happen too much to American crews, but this has been happening for two years now to mariners all around the world for just because they haven't been able to get back home. The fact that American ships on international voyages typically do come back to the U S so you can always kind of typically cycle out at least when you hit a U.S. port. But uh, for a lot of mariners, this, this has been the case, you know, well beyond, I mean, there were documented mariners out there for over a year, 18 months in some cases, it was crazy how long they've been out there. And, and as you're seeing the, the, the little things, the stresses get to you after a while, I was really happy to hear how much they, they lauded the, the captain and, and leadership. I guess that's always a good thing is, you know, it's one thing to be stuck, but at least you have some good leadership at that point to kind of keep you guys going uh, for your shipyard availability. When were you supposed to be out by? It was supposed to be a 35 day shipyard and we are at day 64. So, okay. So, so I, and obviously some of you were on board long before that on your normal voyages for you as the second mate on board, how long typically do you sail uh, on and how long are you off typically? I usually do 120 day hitches. Um, I've actually been off. This is my third contract in a row on this ship, um, which is very rare to get the same ship that many times in a row. Um, just luck of the draw really with the unions um but yeah i'm at 154 days uh on board right now um a bunch of us got on at the same time because of all of the delays with the supply chain even just getting back to the united states uh let alone all the other delays that you have in asia um we it's usually huge crew changes for uh, when we get back in the United States. So 
were, you know, we, th there's probably, you know, 40 to 50% of us who got on all at the same time, uh, just that West coast. And we had one full Asia loop before we came back over here. And, uh, so, you know, there's a lot of us in the same boat and there's a few people who were on even before that. Uh, and it's just, it's it's hard it's hard to wrap your head around. No, no. I, I, listen, I understand entirely. You know, I was I was reading the article in GCAP about you and and what's going on, and it was funny. Uh, the article mentions John McPhee's book, "Back Looking for a Ship," about going to the Union Hall and going down. And it's amazing how things don't change because I believe you had to fly down to Oakland to go get into the Union Hall to go hop your ship here. So it's it's amazing how things haven't changed over 30, 40 years uh, from when that book was written. Uh, I was wondering if, if you could talk a little bit about your jobs and, and why you, you decided to embark on this career. I obviously maybe have second 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 uh, choices right now being stuck there. But uh, what was it that uh, made you go? There's very few women in, in the maritime industry. There's more. There's more and more getting out there. I think it's a very important issue. But what was it that prompted you to uh, take this job? Um, I... I have, well, because of sailing this ship before, um, I knew the senior officers already, um, and it's it's really nice to come to a ship where you already know that you're going to have a good time or you're going to have people who respect you as a human being. Um, you know, there have been captains in the past I've sailed with who, uh, you know, extremely dehumanizing and, uh, you know, emotionally abusive to everyone, you know, it's, it's never just, for me, thank God, it's never just been uh, against me, but it's usually just like the whole crew getting it, which is another bonding moment uh, for the crew if they have a, a bad captain, everyone can talk shit, but, um, you know, this crew has always been amazing um just actual human beings who you can talk to and it's it's not this huge power hungry struggle um so that's why i return here um and just getting into this industry in general um seattle is a you know very visible port from the city um and you know there it's the cutest sound so you see ships everywhere um, I, I grew up on a 450, Hudson 450 sailboat with my family of five. Um, and so we, we sailed the, the South Pacific uh, when I was growing up. So there, the exposure that I've had to the ocean and to ships in general um, has been, even with that exposure, uh, I still did not understand the concept that there were merchant mariners on ships who, you know, these ships look, they, they look very far away, you know, a lot of the time when you're looking at them and you don't realize that there are 20 to 30 people on board who are working that ship. It just looks like some giant Godzilla mask, you know, in the distance. Um, so, you know, it's since then, you know, just with, going to college fairs and looking into the Coast Guard and the Navy, the, the academies are right there too. Um, and so that's how I figured, that's how I learned about Cal Maritime and eventually this role on board. You uh, posted a really powerful video too uh, about issues involving Midshipman X and the issues of sexual assault and sexual harassment on board ships in the maritime industry. Now, obviously that, that takes place everywhere in every industry, but for women isolated at sea, that can be really a separating issue, especially if you're the lone female on a ship, which is very possible at times and everything. So I, you know, I, I really wanna salute you on that. I, th I thought you, you did a very bold statement by doing that. You, you, you went out on a limb and I, I thought it was really, really powerfully and well said and well done. So I just want to, I want to compliment you on that. I, I think, I think it's good. And, and what we need is, is not just young women like you doing that, but we also need men doing that and everybody doing that because sexual assault, sexual harassment goes across lines. It doesn't matter. It, it's men, women, it's everybody involved. So I just, again, I really want to compliment you on that. Absolutely. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about the, the video series now. So you got second episode dropping, I believe right about now, or ready to drop. How many episodes are you looking to do? Or, or is this really dependent on how long you're going to be stuck uh, in Shanghai? 
Yeah, I think the original idea had kind of been more of a trilogy, like like one episode when they they ghosted us, basically. Uh, one episode when they're back, and then the, the last episode would be, oh, we're finally free. Uh, the lockdown is just so much longer than we thought it would be. Um, I think at this point, it's going to be every two weeks on Sunday. It'll I'll drop one. Um, it is a massive amount of work uh, putting these episodes together, and so it, it has taken up a lot of time and makes me feel productive and great, so uh, that is a huge benefit. Um, I'm trying not to, like, you know, I'm trying to keep it kind of light here, and uh, but it's it's going to be interesting. You'll see in the next episode the difference in the original interviews and the interviews now uh i think as time goes on they will continue to get uh, a little more anxiety ridden and tense uh which is good I, I think people need to kind of see as we as things go on how our mental states are staying together or not together um and and i, I really really want to convey reality that is like my whole thing um in general with social media there's so much social media that's just all you know everything's great and we're doing great here and look at how great my life is and it's like that is not how life is it's just yeah I, that the, the huge thing with social media for me is just like conveying reality and humanizing people like workers in our industry are not humanized even by our company offices um we don't see each other if you don't see someone and you hear about them you know you're like oh whatever but if you see someone and you see someone's emotion on a screen that's that'll make a big difference no no and, and again you know I, I went on your instagram and looking at them and the photos of you and your crew members there i think are really good i, I mean they're grainy they're they're there i mean they're in workplace i mean it's, it's something I'm, I'm familiar with from having sailed but it, a lot of people would not be familiar with i mean just walking through the scaffolding just a myriad of pipes and hoses leave, left everywhere and just just the natural danger of walking on a ship in general is 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 not what anyone ever tends to think it is and i gotta imagine that the crew members families have a lot of relief at least seeing their family members shown a bit you know because contact is always fleeting for them and and you know you you definitely humanize it and, and i think that's what brings it across the different crew members you interviewed and talked to each of them with their stories were, were really interesting everyone from from the guy missing his cow and his goat to 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 the to, to the one maid who crashes drones all the time i don't know if i let him ever fly a drone of mine ever again based on the number of drones he's crashed so i i think i think it's a, it's a really interesting one the other thing i want to talk about too is because i hadn't seen it in the video yet but you had a video on your Instagram of you playing the guitar and singing down in, in, I think it was number eight hold on the ship. Uh, tell me about that. That that's, that that's an interesting video. <clears throat> well, okay. So when the, the shipyard workers are on board, there was so much noise all the time that you really couldn't even hear yourself think. Um, when they left, the silence was intense. It was just, deafening in itself so uh, walk, walking around the ship the mates basically become safety officers we walk around uh walking around in the tunnels walking around in the cargo hold you, you can hear your footsteps in a way that you i have never been able to hear my footsteps even when we're underway because we have nothing running there's it's just pure silence which is you never experience on a ship when it's in operation usually. Um, so just <laughs> a year with boredom, um, you know, the footsteps became, you know, the yoo -hoo, like uh, hearing the echoes. And then with that, I was just singing songs all, all in, the, uh, all in the cargo hold. Uh, and cargo hold A was the best lighting. So just decided to grab my gear down there and have a little ditty. I've taken up a lot of time, Madeline. I, I really appreciate you talking about this. Uh, is there anything you want to leave the audience with uh, based on you and the crew on board and uh, being restricted to the ship? Um, 
I just wanted to say that uh, with the number of people, I, I was not expecting uh, the number of people to be interested, the number of people who were interested in the first episode. And it's really nice to see that. Um, and with that number of people, we're able to gain more visibility. Um, so it was just really amazing, all the shares and comments um, with the algorithm that really helps us get visible. Um, and that was hugely uh, positive for us and very, you know, it was a, a, very, a very positive thing for us to see. And I really appreciate everyone I appreciate you, Sal, for, uh, you know, taking the time to interview and, and to give us a little more visibility. We really appreciate it. No, I listen, I, I, I support you guys 100%. And, and, and I, I feel bad that you find yourself in this position in a lockdown. But more importantly, how little people know just about your job on a routine basis, let alone when you're facing a situation like this, you know, you and the crew on board and all the other ships in the U.S. Merchant Marine and all the world's Merchant Marine, you know, keep everyone supplied all the time. I mean, you, you're the ones who keep it going. And as you know, you're very unheralded. You didn't know about it either. You know, as you talked about sailing around and most people don't. And, you know, you put such a, a human element to it that I think it, it, it's really great. You know, there's a couple other people in the industry who've done this and I, I think it's great. But like you said, you don't want to just show, hey, we're in this new port and it's great and it's fantastic. And look at this scenery and it's wonderful. And I get paid a lot of money. It's it's hard work and it's it's away from home. And it's it's at times it's it's very depressing. You know, we've got a story going on here in the United States with a US aircraft carrier that's in in shipyard now, and they've had a series of suicides on board. And you know, it, it's 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 a tough thing. It's it's tough being out of your norm and being put into a stressful situation. So anything I can do is, is, is no problem, Madeline. I'm happy to help you. And what I am gonna do is have your entire video linked to this video, along with your Instagram account. So that you hopefully we'll get you some more followers and more importantly, we'll get the video shared out there and kind of get the story of what's going on on board your ship. All right, I wanna thank Madeline for taking the time on a, on a beautiful sunny morning in Shanghai for, for getting online with me. And most importantly of all, I want everyone to go over to the YouTube link that I have for you with her video, Restricted to the Ship. Take a look, the episodes are dropping now, so be sure to subscribe, like, share, get it across. Don't worry about my feed, get it out there for hers. Go on out there, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos they go out, share them to your friends, share them to people with authority out there in government and Congress, and most importantly of all, educate everybody about what the Merchant Marine does in sustaining us throughout our normal times and how tough a job this actually is. Madeline, to you and your crew, my hat's off. Anything I can do on my side, you, you're, you got my email, you know how to get contact with me. Let me know. I'm happy to get your information out there for everyone. And to everybody else, I want to thank you for tuning in, watching the, today's episode, and tune in next time for who knows where we're going to be in the world, because we seem to be going all over talking about global shipping. So on behalf of myself and Madeline, this is Sal and Madeline signing off.
Special. God, you're so fucking special. 